Welcome to Bon Jovi Discussions. Today I have my friend Elaine all the way from St. Louis. And actually, we just recently became friends and got acquainted with each other. And uh, we both were at the Nashville show and uh, we shared a lot of the same uh, viewpoints that we're going to talk about in this episode. Uh, in this episode, we are going to talk about the overall tour, the April 2022 tour, which I have a lot to say. And uh, everything I say is, you know, how I truly feel. And uh, but we'll begin. I Elaine, how you doing? I'm good. How are you, Jerry? Good, 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 good. So before we get started, I always like to ask my guests, you know, how did you become a, a fan, a Bon Jovi fan? Runaway came out right at the end of my high school years, and my friends and I fell in love with the song. And then, way before your time, you used to buy line tickets to buy concert tickets. And I went to the Slippery Tour in 87 and we stayed out all night long waiting for those line tickets. And after that show, I've never missed another St. Louis show and other shows too, so. I know it may sound crazy, but I wish I was alive back then to have experienced waiting in line, camping out overnight for tickets and stuff. I, guess, I mean, I guess in a way it'd be pretty crazy to do and, you know. It's yeah, it's pretty amazing how what we do now. You just get yeah. online and that's it, you know. <laughs> the the pre-sale stress. Yes. Well, uh, let's get into it. So, um, obviously, the band, did, they did 15 dates here in April. And uh, I absolutely 100% loved the tour. I thought it was a lot of fun. You know, with I haven't seen the full band since 2018-19, uh, on this house is not for sale tour and I, i've seen john a couple of times in between that you know after the you know in the last year but uh, not the whole band so it was finally it was so good to finally see the band again on stage it was so good to be in an arena filled with other diehard fans with other fans with my other bon jovi friends and and, and all that so it was very very freeing in a way to finally be able to see that again, knowing that, you know, we're pretty much out of this pandemic and they were willing to tour for this short amount of time. Um, you know, just as I said in my previous episode, you know, this tour that John had mentioned in Nashville, this tour was just a way for them to see if they could still do it. And uh, I think they still got it. You know, no, I, they, you I know, agree with you. Yeah, so you know, we're going to talk about a lot of things. You know, we're going to talk about the tour. We're going to talk about the announcement of it, the rehearsal, John's voice, which is a big thing, um, COVID, and the list goes on. But um, overall, what did you think of the tour it, itself? I loved it. This is the first time I've done three shows on a tour, and I love the fact that I got to see the acoustic. I got to see him come up in the crowd, which is always my favorite. And what was neat for me is the first show that I saw in Charlotte, that was where he did the acoustic. But I brought a friend with me who has never been to a Bon Jovi show. And she said that she knew that I wanted to experience sitting up close and doing a VIP, which I'd never done to this tour either. And she loved it. And she didn't even know Bon Jovi to compare a voice or whatever. She had the best time. She was. She went and bought cds after the show and said it was just the best experience you know yeah. and then you know to go in st louis and not do any sort of vip and just sit on the side and take it all in from the stand you know on the side and then to do the third vip and be part of a last show i will never probably not do a last show again because it was just so amazing oh uh, you gotta keep doing the i always say the opening in the last night of the show of the tour is the best but you know I, and I think you and I discussed it until I had cancer. I didn't start doing things. You know, I kept thinking, well, I got to save for this. Now I do save, but I've supplemented to do that. And I've just made it a priority. And it, it just, I, and the people I've met along the way, I mean, it's like my friends think, oh my God, she's going to see Bon Jovi again. And to meet you and like, it's like second nature, you know, it's like, yeah. oh yeah, what? You didn't go to a show, you know? <laughs> exactly. You know, it's, it's funny because I was, I was just saying this the other day. You know, when we were in Nashville, I, I said, you know, it's almost what you just said is equivalent to, you know, when we get home from a show, perfect example was today. You know, people, you know, my friends, my colleague and everyone here, I was like, how was the show? And I'm like, good. But then this, this happened and John did. I'll be there for you. And it was so emotional. And, like, you know, my friends are always like, 
I don't care. I just wanted to hear that it was good. But you and me, or all, all of my other Bon Jovi friends online, want to actually hear how it was and all the extra stuff, and you know, they're actually they actually care. So it's nice that we have gr- a group like that where we can talk to each other with our excitement. Because I come home here, no one wants to hear. Even my own wife is tired of me hearing about this <laughs> stuff. She's <laughs> I, a saint. <laughs> I, I she is. I've chimed in her ear all weekend about how incredible Nashville was, and she goes, "Yeah, you told me five hundred times." <laughs> But, well, you kind of have to take a little while to come off your high. Exactly. So, all right, so let's get into it. So um, I want to praise the tour a little more. You know, I thought the band was just incredible. Um, you know, they sounded great. Their energy was just off the wall. I, the thing that I have noticed between the shows that I did, um, you know, I did Milwaukee Rally in Nashville. But even with me doing my updates on Twitter and just watching overall videos, you could tell that band was 100% happy to be back that, on stage I, in front of fans, and they were just having the time of their lives. They, well, that is one takeaway I got from every show that was consistent. You could feel the love between the band members. You could see that they were so happy. I mean, it was genuine. I mean, it was just that genuine. incredible. It, it, that was, you know, like I think Charlotte, he did 21, so they did 21 songs. St. Louis, they did 23, so we got the bonus uh, encore. And people who don't know, like from Bon Jovi, when when John like slunk off stage or what it faded out, everybody was like, all the com- comments online was, he okay, he left the stage. Well, oh, he, no. did I, he did it intentionally, and I just felt so lucky to have seen that. And yeah. he, when he was in St. Louis, like, you know, they had the big, you could see the emotion in his face. I thought there were tears in his eyes. I thought that man is so happy to be out here doing what he wants to, to be there for his fans. The, the the sad part is this tour, John was under so much scrutiny, you know, which we'll get into here, but he was under so much scrutiny for whatever it did, whatever, whether it was, you know, um, his voice, lip syncing, leaving the stage and this and that, you know. A lot of people don't realize that John used to do the way that he left the stage, you know, with this ain't a love song on these days tour. Yes, yes. He, so, but we'll, we'll get into all that. One thing that I was really impressed by on this tour, and it made me realize, you know, I became a fan in 2000. I was eight years old, and I was one of those It's My Life generations, where It's My Life and Crush started a whole net generation of fans, young fans like me. And I realized on this tour that I'm no longer – that new generation there's actually a new generation now of fans and i I don't even know what to call them i'd like to call them legacy fans you know like i call myself the new generation of crush crush fans if that makes any sense the the new and there's teen i saw so many i even met a few teenagers that are seeing the band for the first time because of their legacy. So that's why I call them the legacy fans. That's just my little word for it. But like they were so happy to be able to see the band because they were like, oh my gosh, with the pandemic, I didn't think I was ever going to get to see them. So it was great that these kids, you know, I, like I said, I ran into this one teenager, and then after the show, I saw her again. And she was like, wow, that's like one of the best shows I've ever seen. Better than videos, better than what I was told, and blah, blah, blah. So it's great that kids are given that chance now to see the band still. Yeah. Well, I think it's because they keep themselves current. Exactly. Yeah. They're they're promoting new albums. And when Mm -hmm. I was in St. Louis, there was a 10 year old little boy behind me. I asked him how old he was. He knew every song, every word to every song. I was like, are you kidding me? You're 10. (laughs) Yeah. And, uh, you know, another thing I want to say about the tour too, is that it was so good to not only to see my favorite band on stage again, but to also see all of my Bon Jovi friends uh, and make new ones like you. You know, it, it felt so good to be able to see everyone again, you know, because every oh. tour I see a lot of the same people, then I meet new people, meet new friends. And that was another highlight for me, was just being able to be with my friends and talk about Bon Jovi nonstop all day. You know, my wife jokes, she's like, I don't have to hear it all day. You can talk about it with everyone else. <laughs> so. Yeah. But, um, well, let's get into, you know, my list here. So the next one is, oh, you blacked out there for a second. Um, So the announcement came back in January. So this is a pretty shortly announced tour. You know, the announcement came at the end of January. 
and um, JBJ experience members got to uh, get the announcement first and the dates first. Obviously, we live in a social media world, so you know, at ten o'clock at night, the dates were out on the experience, and ten oh one, the dates were on right, the right. Instagram and Facebook, and you're like. Well, if you were there at 10 o'clock, you got the announcement first. But um, and then I remember like my wife was sleeping and I, I knew the announcement was coming. And uh, I woke her up. I was like, okay, we're going to do this day. We're going to do this day. And like, I'm starting to plan. I'm starting to look, you know, for flights and and yeah, yeah, you know, just plan. I'm talking with my other Bon Jovi friends. And I was up until like two, three in the morning planning things and get, you know, it was, it was you know, fun. Um, you know, so then, you know, we had that two months of hype. And uh, well, let me ask you. So, did you were you up when the announcement first? Are you an experienced member? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, did you see the announcement right at ten o'clock? I did, and and then my phone started blowing up with people that are not like you said that saw it on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, and everybody's yeah. like, "Oh my God, did you hear? Did you hear? Did you hear?" So, like, it, I laugh because do people not think I would know that? You know. Yeah. Yeah, because I remember Matt, I was I was like falling asleep and I remember Matt was tweeting about, you know, hey, special or something about. Oh, you know, yeah. He always does his cryptic tweets. <laughs> yeah. And we know it was, we knew it was the tour because the band had been teasing it all that week and of itself. And I remember I, I like I was so tired. But then as soon as that tweet came, out, I was like, I'm up, I'm ready. And uh, so and so anyway, so fast forward two months later. So the band rehearsed uh, for almost a, a, a solid month. Um at, a, at an arena over in New York, New Jersey. And uh, they rehearsed for about a month, you know, getting the, the show put together and stuff. And uh, I, the, the biggest excitement that I had for during rehearsals when the band posted it, them doing an acoustic, well, they didn't tell you it was an acoustic set, but fans like you and I and all the other diehards, we know when it's, a, it's gonna be an yeah. acoustic set. You know, we saw Tigo with his, you know, thing and David the accordion and those two things alone, you know, gave it away. Um, and so we'll get into the acoustic set later on here. But um, one thing that um, made me even more excited, which we'll get more into later on, was the teasing of some of the deep tracks. You know, there were some interviews and stuff where they said that they were going to be playing some really deep and this will be my this will be my one very few gripes on this is we didn't get those deep tracks and I know some of the songs that were actually going to get well they were rehearsed but they didn't get played but uh, we'll get into that he, um, here I'm going to make a note of that later on um, so what, what all overall what did you think of rehearsals and and all that. Um, I, it just made me excited, you know, I mean, and like you said, the deep tracks, I actually went through like all the different albums and picked out like the songs that I would hope for them to play, yeah. you know, and, mm -hmm. and I, I'm glad they played radio. I think that's just fun and, you know, oh, yeah. sing along, but there were a lot that I would have liked. I know that. Yeah. Runaway is like hasn't been played in years hardly because it's a struggle. So, you know, I've, I've come to terms with that, but I do have a list that I wish that I would have her, you know, I, I love always, you know, I, I've got a whole list that I yeah. wish. Yeah, you know, I was honestly surprised that Runaway didn't even make it in once. It wasn't an audible. It was never, it was, I'm sure it was thought about, but it was never put into motion. Um, you know, since we're talking about deep tracks here, you know, there was 20, 25 songs that they actually were deep tracks and that they were going to pull out and, and play. And we didn't get any. But like you said, radio, I was so surprised and thankful that that song was a staple every single night. Yeah, well, and and it just like you, when you go to multiple shows, you want them to check, you know, you hear, you want to, and, yeah. and I know he, I'm guessing the reason he they didn't do Bed of Roses is because that's when he pulls a woman up and they do the thing, and, and I get why, you know, I mean, he came up in the audience because it was the last show, and God forbid he did get COVID, he's done, you know. Exactly. But I do love that song, and I love the way he does it, and I mean, in and out of love, I would have loved to have heard it. I mean, there's just, yeah. you know. It's, you know, <sighs> A lot of you know we we were, we've been so spoiled by Bon Jovi over the last forty years with 
unpredictable set list. You didn't know what they were going to open up with. You didn't know what, how many encores you got, how many songs you got, what songs you were going to get, because John would always change it up. But, you know, within the last, you know, this house tour and then this tour, it's pretty much 95% the same set list every night. And so I think as diehards, you know, going to multiple shows, we want to see that changed up. We want to see other deep stuff. But, you know, with Omaha as, you know, open a night, I was so excited because you didn't know what was coming. And I was so happy that radio, I was not expecting radio to get played at all. And, uh, and let alone being a staple every night. And it did so well with the crowd, too, you know, because it's not only a deep track, it's also an outtake. Right. You know? And it was put on, obviously, it's on the box set and all that. But you, I, I could be wrong, but not a lot of the general fans know what Radio Saved My Life tonight is. You know, maybe the more deeper fan, or like, obviously, the diehards know it, but. Joe Schmo off the street doesn't know what Radio Save My Life tonight is. So to see that played every single night was honestly really cool. Um, you know, Love's the Only Rule. That got played twice and unfortunately got taken off. But I thought that was a great encore song. And I'm sorry I missed Story of Love. That's one of my new favorite songs. See, I I'll, just I'll get to gloat about that one because I got to see Story. I know you did. <laughs> And in like, his like, arms, lay your his hands hand. on me, never say goodbye. Those are some of my, you know. Yeah, and um, so I'm trying to think of the other, you know the other ones. Other than that, we really did get. I mean, we got just older, uh, which yeah. I was. I really enjoyed, you know, with the whole sha la la. And you uh, know what else I noticed? Like he didn't do it in Nashville, but what he did do in St. Louis. You know, when he says, "Tell Coach T that I cut my hair in St. Louis," he said, "I still have my hair." Yeah, yeah, he he's pretty much done that. Oh, pretty much the last few tours. I've got my hair. I I yeah. have my hair. There was a few shows on this tour that he actually sang the original lyric. I cut my hair, so I kind of I kind of like that. He did. I thought he did that in Nashville. I think he may have. I didn't because I look for it now. So yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure. I'm like, oh good. Yeah. You know, but the addition of the sha la la, I really liked. Yeah. Um, you know, but other than that, you know, we didn't get many more deep tracks than that. You know, my other gripe with this tour was it's no secret that next year they're planning a, a huge 40th anniversary tour. You know, Tico's mentioned it. Other band members have put it out there. So it's it's not a secret. So this tour, this 15-month tour, could have been a perfect way to change up the set list every night, try out different songs, and see how those songs would react with a crowd. Okay, for example, you mentioned In and Out of Love. Play In and Out of Love, see how the crowd reacts to it, and then say, hey, this might actually work for next year's tour. You know, kind of gamble with songs and just say, hey, we haven't played this in years. Let's see how it sounds, the crowd reaction. Maybe we'll play it next year on this big world world tour. You know, so I think that was another missed opportunity with this tour. Instead of just doing the same songs every night, change it up a lot and throw out different songs that you want to play. And, you know, I would have been happy with that. You know, so that's one of my little uh, rants is that. Um, let's go into the, the big one here, John's voice. So me personally, I, th I think there's so much hate out there right now. And, and let, let me back up. I will respect everyone's opinion. You know, I, I, I know John's voice isn't perfect right now, and I don't expect it to be. The thing is, vocal cords are the size of your thumbnail, just about. And so when you're, especially at his stature for 40 years, singing every, almost every night, and these long, lengthy tours, and then playing back-to-back. -back. For example, you and me, when we go to a show, Obviously, we're not professional singers, so we don't know how to train our voice. But you, our voices are so sore after the show. And the next day, John has to go to the next city and perform again. So people don't realize that your vocal cords take strain every day, every day, especially when you're singing every night. Well, unfortunately, the haters, they've been bashing his voice since 87. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, it's just... People are just cruel. Yeah. Now, I, I don't want to use the term haters. 
I, I I do think there are now there are some negative people out there that just hate the band and will criticize John for everything he does. I'll call those people haters, but the people that I'm pretty much referring to are actual fans. I there are some fans out there that you know do bash them, but I do think that they come from a place of sincerity. Most of them, most of them, and and they care and. They know that there's a problem. So there are fans out there that do care and are acknowledging what's happening. Me personally, what I, I I still think John sounds great. I think he sounds incredible. I think um, I know there are some vocal issues. I I know he's having trouble, you know, going along. Um, I'm just trying. I'm trying to find the way, perfect way to say this. Well, and don't you think that some people that are judging are judging based off a cell phone that yeah. you and I record rather yeah. than being there? Because I listen to my phone when I leave there, and I'm like, he did not sound this bad. It sounded wonderful in person, you know. So exactly, you know the the th- the thing is, is he hasn't been doing this in two and a half years, you know. So for him to kind of get back into the realm of touring every night and and you know the, one of the things that, one of the reasons why they did a whole month rehearsal was they were practicing that set schedule they were you know playing two night or rehearsing for two days and then they would take a day break they'd go back in for another day or two you know kind of act like they were touring and so that kind of you know that could have also hurt him a little bit too was overuse of his voice you know who knows how he sounded during rehearsals but well, they typically don't rehearse that long. Yeah. And so you know, he said in an interview, too, that they, they've never rehearsed this long. They'll go yeah. into the studio and, and play for a few days before the tour, but that was it. Don't you think from show to show that he improved each show? I absolutely, I, 100%. I, I, I will say that I think Dallas and Nashville were the best shows of the tour. As far as his voice goes, energy, and just, every, I mean... I truly, truly think that if this tour was to continue this month, if Nashville wasn't the last show and they, they still had 20 more dates, I bet you there'd be less and less negative reviews. Well, and I, I think, thought St. Louis had, I mean, it wasn't like a stellar review, but it wasn't that bad. So I thought it was like in St. Louis, you you know, I mean, he continued to sing two more songs. So, yeah. So, and so. I don't ever expect John to sound like he used to. I, a lot of people are saying, well, he sounds terrible, but he, he doesn't sound terrible. Mm-hmm. He's, he's, he, he knows how to work his voice. He knows what he can and can't do. Um, but, you know, for me personally, I, I, I like what I hear. You know, so as I said, I respect every other fan's opinion. And the key word is fan. Not the not the critics out there who aren't fans, not the Joe Schmo off the street who doesn't like Bon Jovi to begin with. I'm talking about I respect other fans' opinions because they're fans. They come from a sincere place, and they do care about John. And you know, I I see the struggle. I do. I see John struggling. I see John having a tough time here and there. At the same time, too, I think he still sounds great. I think. You know, his energy. I'm just happy to see them again because my whole train of thought is one day we're not going to have this anymore. We're not going to be able to see Bon Jovi on a stage again. We're not going to see. We're not going to we're not going to see all this anymore, you know, so as I tell. Myself and other friends, enjoy it while it's here, because one day it's not. It, it takes me back to the whole generation thing, the the teenagers or the young people who want to still see the band they don't care about john's voice they care about just being able to still see them again you know we're never going to have the slippery one at bon jovi ever again but the band is still so good john is still so good you know you just my my, my thing is you take the good with the bad you, you i thought the, the band the, sounded better than ever yeah, and the thing is, too, and I think this is be- to help John's voice a little bit. The band was a little louder on this tour too. I noticed that like, you could hear David a lot more on this tour compared to previous tours. Um, so I like that too. Another now, the the big thing here is the whole lip sync thing. You know that that whole speculation when 
that John was, I'm pretty sure it was sick at the time. And whether I'm not saying it was lip synced, I'm not saying it wasn't in Houston and in, in Houston, you know, if he was sick, which I think he was because that day he also got IV therapy and, you know, through the grapevine, I've heard he was sick. So he still went out on, on stage and still performed. And if you watch that show, I mean, I've watched so many videos in different angles. He was definitely not feeling himself because you could tell there was times that he was pointing at his throat. He couldn't um, hit certain lines. You know, he would, you know, stop singing for a second and then get back into it. So he was definitely not feeling good. And on top of that, there was all, I'm sure John has seen these negative reviews as well. So he's probably thinking, okay, if I if I try singing "Living on a Prayer" right now, and I know that I'm sick and I I can't do it, the reviews are just going to be even worse. Well, and so, the way he ended that show, I hope to see you all. You know that that was kind of heartbreaking yeah. to hear him say that. Well, you know the the, the entire show was not lip synced, and we all know that John doesn't do lip syncing. Wanted, which was the only encore that night, and that's another reason why he, he was probably sick was because he did wanted. And the only reason I think he did want it was because a few nights before that, they didn't do want it, which we'll get into. So, but he came back out and did want it, but he didn't do bad medicine or who says he ended it with wanted. So, so my, my, my thing is, is if he was sick, which I think he was, I can justify the lip syncing. You know, you can tell on stage he was embarrassed by it. You know, oh, and I agree. If, and the the whole key word here is, if he was, there were moments where he was definitely singing. There were, he was definitely talking to the mic, you know. But I remember in the in the living on a prayer performance right before there was a recording on YouTube. He has a mic at Tico's uh, stand, and he can talk into it. We can't hear it. But the downstairs crew, the soundboard crew can. So I don't know if they were setting it up for it to be a lip sync. But you can just tell by the way he was covering his stuff. And like I said, I'm not, I'm not being negative about this at all. Well, I can, he also had his back to the crowd more yeah, than normal. Yeah. So my guess is I think he was lip syncing. I can justify it, though, because he was sick. I don't think he would have been able to do a good job with it when he's already struggling. Now... If he was to do every single night doing that lip syncing and he was feeling just fine, he was lip syncing, that would be, I would be outraged with that as reasonably so. But for, but this was the only time that it was ever, if it was lip synced and I can, I can justify it because he was sick. You yeah. know, is it ideal? No, I, I personally would have wanted him to still try. But, you know, he, I mean, he came back out, though, because then our prayer was played. Then they went out. Then he came back up and didn't want it. And he actually did sing wanted. So. Well, I think wanted. I agree with you about, like, John doesn't lip sync. But he also, the way I look at it, it was one song. And he didn't want to let the fans down with their anthem, you know. Exactly. And not play it. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I think it was made out of. The thing is, especially with critic reviews who aren't even fans, they don't realize all the stuff that gets you know put into play. They don't mention that John was doing IV therapy that day. You know, an IV therapy you know replenishes your system with nutrients, sure. hydration. So the critics out there didn't put that in. They didn't put in that he was probably sick or was having a hard time throughout the show with his throat. They just just all oh, he was lip syncing, you know, or. or not saying that he, or or they wouldn't say that he was singing every other song though, but you know that, that's the thing is, the clicks go to the negative reviews. Yep. You know, but at the at the end of the day, at the end of the tour, I I will confidently say, I thought John sounded still great this tour. Maybe not the John Bon Jovi that we used to know. But still an incredible singer. I still love watching him sing. And another thing is, too, is I don't go to the shows and, and just listen to him sing. I like to sing along, and it's it's one big party to be able to see your favorite band on stage singing along. I'm not sitting there critiquing this and that, you know? 
He's also not 20. Exactly. You know, the thing is, look at all the other singers that are around his age right now. Steven Tyler struggles here and there. Vince Neil, that's no secret. Uh, you know, all, all these other artists. But every single person is different, though. You know, and John's not purposefully going up there and just being lazy about it. He continues to work. I mean, he's got his hot tea. He's got his drinks. He's got his throat spray. He's got all these things that helps him to be the best that he can be. And that, that's all I ask. That, all I ask is for him to try. That's it. At the end of the day, I'm going to support him. I'm going to I'm going to enjoy the ride while, while we still have it. Yeah, and, and what an incredible front man. I mean, his energy, and he plays to all sides of the crowd, and he makes sure that everybody – you know, knows who the band is and gives them their time on stage yeah. too. I mean, I just think, yeah, it's the big picture. And, and like I said, you know, I want my the people that are watching or listening. I want my opinion respected because I respect everyone else's, whether it's it's a good opinion or it's a negative opinion. You know, I do get where the negative opinions are coming from. It, it's like I said, from fans, it's an opinion of concern. So I so I, I respect that. But not the people that constantly bash him every single chance that they get. Not those not those people. The the fans who are generally just concerned. But you know, I, I think I think like you said too, I think if this continue if this tour was to continue, I think John would have gotten better and better. Mm-hmm. But it, it also raises concern though for me too because i i don't want to see the end of the band i don't i want there to be so many more tours and so many more shows i've been to 59 shows and i want that number to keep going up i also think if this decline keeps going i i I do think you know the next year's tour the you know 23 and 24 tour is going to be the last as far as touring goes because not the end of the band, but touring because I don't know how much more John could do, you know, every night. And, you know, that, that's, that's for another discussion, but, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm here for the ride. I'm here to enjoy it. I love John. I love the band. The band has always been there through my dark times. I'm going to do the same as a fan and, you know, through the good and through the bad. So, but I, I know what you're saying. It's like I can't imagine life without a Bon Jovi concert, you know? <laughs> exactly. Anything else you want to say about his voice? No, I, I agree with you 100%. Yeah. I mean, I thought he sounded good. I had a great time. I mean, just yeah. loved, loved being at every concert. Yep, exactly. Let's get into some other stuff here. So, let's talk about obviously this tour happening with the, you know, COVID around in the pandemic. So I have noticed between the beginning of the tour and and now the whole world itself has kind of um, changed rapidly with the pandemic in a good way. You know, obviously we saw the use of masks being used less and less through the world. Airports. I remember going when I went to Milwaukee and rally airports, you had to wear a mask. Nashville, you didn't have to wear a mask in the airport, which was you know, so different um, protocols, you know, the arenas weren't asking for proof anymore, vaccination, or you didn't have to wear a mask anywhere. You know, I don't remember, I wore my mask to be safe, but I don't remember anyone ever being asked to use a mask or vaccination card. So, but with that in mind, at the start of the tour, they still had to be COVID uh, cautious. Um, Obviously we know Everett caught COVID. Well, I think it was the Florida shows he was missing. Was it? He came back to the Atlantis show, I believe, was his first show back after getting COVID. Yeah. Because. Yeah. Um, so that had me worried, too, because that was right in the middle of the tour. So I was worried because, well, I think there's 15, 20 crew members that got COVID. The, the sad part is no matter how tight of a bubble you're in, you, you, you're going to get exposed to it. So like I said, crew members. You know, every show that I went to, I saw crew members everywhere going out in public and, you know, eat, and which is fine. You know, that's their prerogative. But keep in mind, once you get in front of an infected person, you you infect 100 other people. And then that 
those hundred people, in fact, a thousand of them, you know. So I think, you know, these somehow some someone got COVID and it just spread through some of the crew and to the band. And you can't prevent every single tour that's out there right now. Every, someone has gotten COVID. And sometimes the shows have been canceled or postponed, whatever. But so I was surprised that no one else in the band got COVID, got it because yeah. Everett, Everett travels with the band, you know. So. And that was yeah that and so when I bought my first VIP, I did pay for the insurance for fear of me getting it and not, and losing that much money. And I yeah. I didn't do it after that, but I just thought and and I was so careful. I mean, I didn't go anywhere or do anything because I thought I do not want this to mess up me going to the show. Yeah, absolutely. I did the same thing with with my stuff, but um, you know, one of the sad things that I missed out, I missed with the co, you know, obviously we do VIP every tour, and ever since the Circle tour, they've been offering backstage uh, tours, which I love, just being able to see behind the scenes and stuff, and being able to go on stage and see the band's equipment and all that. They've been doing that every tour since the Circle tour. Obviously, they couldn't do it this tour because of the pandemic and it being it exposing people and all that. So I I did miss that. Um, you know, the band w- was pretty cautious. Um, you know, as the tour went on, you you did see more fans meet in the band, mm-hmm. but a lot of them were fans. You know, waiting for them at the hotel and stuff. And I've heard some good stories. And I've heard some bad stories. I've heard you know. Earlier in the tour, if you notice some of the photos that were with fans, the band was wearing a mask and fans were wearing a mask. But I've heard stories where fans who weren't wearing masks would run up to them and and they'd be shrugged off because they, you know, me personally, I'd I'd hate to meet the, not hate to meet the band, but I'd be cautious about to meet the band right now because if any single person, let me back it up. If I was a band member, if I was John Bon Jovi, I would not want to be exposed to anybody because once you're infected, especially if you're John, that you're going to have to cancel at least, you know, they're doing three to four shows a week. So you, you're going to have to cancel those three, four shows yeah. or postpone them. And also, I think once the mandates were lifted, they sold more tickets too because. Mm-hmm. I've got a friend who is not vaccinated and he's a diehard fan. And once I told him the mandates were done, he's like, all right, sign me up, you know? So, yeah. that's so but overall, I, I think the band and the crew, I think, you know, they, they really did a good job at um, keeping everyone safe. And, you know, I, m- most of the fans, they were respectful when meeting the band and stuff like that. But, you know, there were some fans who just, not wearing masks and stuff and trying to run up to them. And, and you know, the thing is, it, it, it's so hard to, you know, we're all trying to go back to reality and it, it's hard not to want to meet the band and and interact with people. And I'm sure the, the band feels the same way. We just we got, we got to be safe still, you know, because it's still out there and it, it could cancel the rest of the tour. Um, so let's go, let's get into the show itself. Um, the opener. So what I, I was surprised that they still used the the 2013 audio on this tour. You know, the, I, I can't even make the sound effect, but I, I was happy to see that. Um, the, the visuals w- weren't as good as I was expecting them to be, honestly. I mean, it was still cool, the light strobes and the, the background a little bit, but I was kind of hoping for a little more, you know? Yeah. Um, but overall, it, I, I, mean, I was just, I really like the visuals with this house. Tour. Yeah, really you know, like. with that curtain coming down. Or yeah, even in the my favorite is the circle tour when the, the curtains down and then you see like the band um, walking down. You know, boom, 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 boom. You know, and then you mm-hmm. see the band walking down in the circle. Um, but it, overall, I, I, I like the opener. I thought it was cool because um, I was wondering how they were going to do that with such a short amount of time between the announcement and the the tour you know, what what they were going to do. Um, so, so the next thing I want to talk about is, we, we kind of touched base on this too, was the, it, pretty much the same set list every night. Um, without repeating what we already said, you know, I wish there was a lot more uh, deep tracks. Um, I was surprised that Wanted was left out for a night. Then that was another uproar. 
if anything, that you know, not playing wanted. But wanted, if you look back through even t- tours and tours and tours ago, wanted was left out a few times, which which does surprise me because it's such a big song that everyone expects to see, kind of like prayer, bad name, and it's my life, and and so forth. So, but I remember um, the uproar that it got a couple weeks ago when they didn't do. I saw that also, yeah. It was, it was like, you know, it was, every night there was always something, John's voice or lip sync or they didn't play Wanted or John left the stage without saying goodbye and, and just all these things. And and uh, for me personally, I'd be okay if Wanted didn't get played live. I, I like the song, but. Well, like I said, I would have rather heard Bed of Roses than Wanted. I mean, just yeah. the personal preference. I, I, and, I, I could name you a million songs I'd rather hear than Wanted. Yeah, I'm yeah. not saying Wanted is a bad song. I, I like Wanted. I just don't care to see it live every single night. Uh, and it's funny enough because I was actually jamming to Wanted tonight. I was listening to uh, the live version from Japan 2002, the promo concert for Bounce. So I was actually jamming that tonight. But I really listened to Wanted, though. You know? So, but hey, it is what it is. Another thing I wish they would have done with the set list is, you know, instead of doing the same set list, I think some songs could have been interchanged. You know, like songs like um, Just Older, Whole Lot of Leave, and Lost Highway, Who Says You Can't Go Home. They could have swapped those songs every night for different ones like, you know, Because We Can, That's What the Water Made Me. Um, just just different songs that could, you know, work. Um, you know, We Got It Going On and and, and stuff like that, you know? And I did like that he came out in Nashville with prayer, but I really wish he would have started with "I love this town." See me too. And, and, and I so thought it would have cool. been really appropriate. Yeah, and it was so cool that "I love this town" was on the as an audible. I was so bummed that they didn't play it though, you know. But um, yeah, yeah, I thought we might get a couple extra songs being the last show. I thought so too, and especially with Nashville. I thought we were gonna get some maybe. I was hoping for I Love This Town, and so I was, I was like, glad it was on the set list, but it just it didn't get played. But, um, yeah, so like I said, I wish some songs would get interchanged with other ones, you know, because obviously you have to play the hits, you know, It's My Life, Born to Be My Baby, and, and, and so forth. But songs like Just Older, Whole Lot of Leave, and Lost Highway, who says I go back and forth on, but those songs could be taken off and you wouldn't get an uproar. Like like Wanted, Wanted you get an uproar. But if if you didn't play a whole lot of leader and lost highway or we weren't born to follow, John could get away with that and put in a different song than because we can or run away and, and stuff like that. You know, so I was kind of bummed that didn't happen. And yeah. I even like, you know, from this house, living with a ghost, God bless this mess. Yeah. You know, I mean I love those songs, you know, but but oh. people who are not they, people don't even know, like I said, you know, like Somebody said, oh, they're playing all their new stuff. Well, the original point was to uh, promote the 2020 album, you know? So, he, of course, he's going to play stuff from there. Yeah, I, I think they were excited to play some of those new songs, too, you know? J- you know, obviously, you got to think, if you were in John Shoes and you had to, you've been playing these hits for 40 years, you get sick of playing, you know, you want to play new stuff that you haven't played on stage before. So, um, another, I wish the encores were... A little different too every night you know like like omaha, omaha they did um love's the only rule so you know all the encores would have been a great way to play new songs or not new songs but like songs that they, they, they never play um so i wish the encores were a little different like different songs to close the show like one night you close a show with bad medicine or, or the next night you close it with who says or prayer or all, all just different songs, um, yeah. but you know, like the set list was so predictable in this tour. Um, you know, but the, the, this is coming from two diehard fans. Obviously, Joe Schmo, who just goes to see them in one city, that's that's good enough for them, and they don't care. This uh, you you and me here are sitting here thinking how we want all of our shows to be different because we do right. one. But. Um, you know, it takes me to my next point too. The whole "I'll be there for you" um, as an encore and leaving. You know, we we touched base on it a little bit, but I love that. I think you know, yeah, it's great to see the the bows and and everything, but it's also kind of cool to see them do it a little differently. 
You know, now they could do it like what they did in Nashville, where they did their bowing and then play the song and then John waved goodbye. But I thought that was really good, really cool how he did that. You know, just waving goodbye and stuff, and then just disappear and then the band kind of fade out. In a way, the first time that what, what city did they do it for the first time? Was that? I think it was Austin, wasn't it? Where John? No, it was St. Louis because I saw it. It was St. Louis. Okay, so I I wonder because I think I'll be there for you was just added like on a whim. You know, I think John called it. It I don't... was because they were all getting in, and he said he turned around and he told every he lifted his finger up and went like this, and and they they kind of all sat back down. Yeah, because I don't think it was even on the set list, even as an audible. I don't think it was. I have to look back, but either either way, you know, so. The, I don't think the band was even expecting him to leave the stage at the end because because if you watch David, you know when John leaves at the end of "I'll Be There for You," David's like looking down because he can see down backstage and he's looking, he's watching John because if you face the stage, the band usually comes in and leaves the right side of the stage, and so you watch David, you know, kind of watching, and then he goes. <laughs> you know, think okay. Yeah, yeah no, it was definitely they they didn't expect it, but I also like yeah. them ending with that song because I think it sends a message too. You know. Yeah, exactly. Which you know, yeah. Um. So, but you know, I, I I that's where I like it being changed up though. You know, not having the same typical show every night. It's changed up like like that. Perfect example. You know, and speaking of Bobby, there for you know, what you just said. After Nashville, after bawling my eyes out during that encore, you know, I mean, because I and I wasn't there were so many fans that cried too, you know, with John's speech, him choking up for you know before this, uh, I'll be there for you, and then actually performing it, you know, knowing that that was the last song of the last part of the tour, it was emotional and it, it got me thinking, oh my god, can you imagine this is the actual last show? last song that they're performing it makes you tear up and i i truly you know when that unfortunately when that final tour comes i truly truly think i'll be there for you is the perfect way to end the show and i'm sure john has thought about it now you know especially after this tour you know closing the shows with that song is perfect and i felt like he didn't want to leave the stage any more than we wanted him to leave the stage oh, no. too because and I even actually just watched uh, a video tonight before we did this podcast of him going back and forth. You know, like when he was walking, and then you know he uh, just gets right back into it and goes, "I'll be there for you." And what well, you know, and then you know when he goes down the stairs, "I'll be there for you." Remember that. You know that was, you know that I just I got chills just even saying it. You or, or thank you for loving me would be another, you know, yeah. send another kind of message. <laughs> exactly. Never say goodbye. But I truly, yeah, yeah. I truly think I'll be there for you would be a great, you know, maybe John was experiment. Maybe I, it, this takes me back to what I was saying about experimenting with different songs and see what works with the crowd. Maybe John is, you know, maybe thinking of a final tour and he played around with I'll be there for you and to see how it would work out as a encore song. You know, we, we, we don't know until the next tour, but, uh, well, we know yeah. he's always thinking. Yep. Next one. I want to talk about is the harmonica. I loved how much we got to see the harmonica this tour, whether it was for, um, let it rain, which that was a new addition. Um, now, now that we're talking about additions too, I also want to mention how I was excited that we got a Limitless solo, which isn't on the album, and a the We Weren't Born to Follow outro as well, which that was actually put into the um, end of this house tour, I, I believe, or at least that that private gig they did earlier this year. Actually, I think it was just for the private gig this year, or last year that they did for that uh, Chrysler, I think it was. But so I was glad that they did the outro for We Weren't Born to Follow that thing that phil x came up with but um but yeah so i was glad to see the harmonica added into end of let it rain i wish we could get a live version of that because i loved it i loved let it rain uh through the entire show or through through the end of the song um and uh and then the way he now 
I am sick of American Reckoning, which we'll get into here in a second. But I did love watching him do the harmonica in the beginning and at the end. Did you see the one video? I think it was Austin or Hughes. It was one of the Texas shows, but he was playing the harmonica. And I don't know if maybe he just wasn't feeling good or if there was something wrong with the harmonica, but it kept going in and out. And so he, he threw stopped. it. That he was Houston. Threw. That was Houston. Okay, so goes back to my proven point of him not feeling good. I think he uh, just wasn't feeling good. Um, so, so I was glad to see the harmonica. And I would have never thought about the harmonica being played during Let It Rain. You know, listen to the album before the the, the tour. Yeah, so, it sounded great. And, you know, you got to remember the man just had COVID not too terribly long ago. And to breathe like that, you know, the, the, to play the yeah. harmonica like that is not easy. And I wish I would have put that in the segment of John's voice, too. Yeah. You know, he had COVID, too. And, you know, other singers, other people have said that their voice are, are, is just coming back a year after having COVID. You know, he, he had it six months ago. Yeah. So, so the next part is the acoustic set. I was so, as diehards, I remember when they showed that rehearsal photo doing the acoustic set, we were so excited. No, it was all speculation at the time, but we we knew damn well. Right, uh, what, yeah. Yeah. And then obviously the, the first um, few shows happened and they did the acoustic set. I saw a Milwaukee and Rally. I think it was only, I think it was, what, six shows they did that in? Maybe five? I saw it in Charlotte. Charlotte, so they that was not, the fourth They show. did not do it in St. Louis. Okay, and I don't think they did it in Florida, the Florida shows, if I remember. Anyway, but it, it, it was whether the sixth or seventh show, they stopped doing it. And... You know, th but they played the same songs every night. They did American Lower the Fly got done once or twice. I, was say, I thought that I saw they did that too. Yeah, which I I would have picked that over American Record. Now I like American Record. I like what it stands for, but I thought it got overplayed on this tour. Um, the the sad part is, a lot of people sat down for that song because I. It, it, first off, it's a new song to. The general fans don't know it, so they just sit down. You know, and then they did the We Don't Run. Well, a lot of people don't know We Don't Run either unless you're a diehard fan, let right. alone it being an acoustic version. And I really liked how they supported Ukraine with that song too, you know, doing the acoustic. And then it was, it went to a special and all that. But I think with an acoustic set, with it being such a unique and fun feature, especially for the diehard fans. I, I I hate to say it, but it's true. The acoustic set was a missed opportunity where they could have done different songs every night. You know, okay, keep the rest of the, ta the, the set list the same, but let's change up the uh, acoustic set. Let's do One Night It's Hard Letting You Go or All About Loving You or I Want You or even acoustic version of Blaze of Glory, Never Say Goodbye, you know, Something to Believe in, uh, Lie to Me, Diamond Ring. There's so many, yeah. There's so many that they could have changed, you know, give some of the diehard fans ability to see some of those songs again. But every night it was American Reckoning. We don't run. Saturday night. Saturday night they could have done it, the electric version here and there. But they could have played around with so many different songs. And one of the reasons why I think that the acoustic set was taken off was because... Fan, the general fans didn't know American Reckoning and We Don't Run. So you didn't get a big, um, you know, even the shows that I did, obviously I, we know all these songs. And I enjoyed the entire acoustic set, but I saw it in Milwaukee and Raleigh. American Reckoning and We Don't Run, people sat around looking around and weren't singing along. But once Saturday Night came on, people were up and having a good time and, and singing along. So I, so I think that's why the acoustic set stopped because there was no no audience response from it, you know. And so it it, it saddens me because that may this may be the last time we'll ever get an acoustic set like that, unless we do a runaway, right? <laughs> yeah, but this acoustic set, like I said, it was definitely a missed opportunity because this could have been the perfect way to add in different songs every night that were different. Like I said, keep the set list the same, if you will change the acoustic set up a little bit every night play some of those ballads you know speaking of ballads we only ever got i'll be there for you and in, in these arms once that's the only ballads that we got 
you know, it, speaking of Better Roses, you know, yeah, you mentioned earlier that that was a crowd interaction song, but he could have done an acoustic. He could have done always acoustic, the This Stuff Feels Right version. Um, even some of the hits, you know, do wanted acoustic, you know, but I could go on and on about it. But what did you think? You're of- right, because in St. Louis, when he did it, everybody like sat down. So the cheering was not as strong and until, you know. Yeah. So, you know, it, it hurts me to think that if. Um, you, obviously, the band was excited to do the acoustic set. It saddens me to think that John would have stopped it because of the poor crowd response. But I'm sure he knows, too, you know. American crowds are unfortunately all about the hits. You know, eighty percent of that arena are just general fans that just want to go for the hits. I, I get it because when I go to see Def Leppard or Poison or, or any other band that I'm into, but not a diehard fan of, I just want the hits. I don't know the deep stuff. Fans like you and me, obviously, we want the the deep stuff. Right. But John's got a balance between the general fans the diehard fans, and himself. You know, for him, it's all the new stuff. For us, it was radio and just older and love's the only role. And for the general fans, it was 90% of the set list. Well, and again, like you're saying, you know, diehard fans and new fans. Like I told you, my friend who'd never gone to a Bon Jovi concert who lives in Charlotte, she was way ahead of the game. She started listening to stuff. I made her a list of what I thought he might sing off the 2020 album, and she recognized it, and she was prepared. But that's not the norm. Yeah, exa- exactly. So, you know, it, it saddens me because I even saw it in Nashville, too, when they were doing American Rent. You know, a lot of people just sat in their seats and looked around, and they were, I hate using this word, but bored. Yeah. And, you know, and I'm surprised American Reckoning was, you know, every tour, every album, there, there's always a favorite of John's. You know, like, what about now? His favorite was Amen. Um, this house was Scars on this guitar. You know, on this album and tour, American Reckoning was his favorite. I, I would have thought Story of Love would have been the one played almost every night, you know, because they promoted that the most. They John spoke so highly of it. We got it one time, and I don't want to brag here. All right, all right. <laughs> I got to see it in Raleigh, and I thought, wow, they should do this every night. Yeah, well, but, I was really hoping to see that in Nashville because I thought that would be so cool to have the images of the family. Let, 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 I've watched that video quite a bit because I just yeah. love seeing that. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, hopefully in the future, you know, hopefully we get an acoustic set again and we get those deep tracks, you know, kind of like what they did for the circle tour. They did that during the circle tour when they did the acoustic set, they came out and did deep stuff. Like it's hard letting you go in London or something for the pain and all, all, all this stuff. It's just, I, I could go on. So let me, let me move on. <laughs> Another thing that I noticed too, and I wonder if it is the, if it was the arena sign, but at the Bridgestone arena in Nashville, it, and the band did a TikTok. So you, there was Tico, David, Hugh, Shanks, and Phil that did it. So there, no John yeah. wasn't in the video. And neither, every, I think everyone was in the video. Anyway, if you notice, Phil, I would like to say purposefully, kneels down so you can see. The, the world tour. tour. The world tour. Uh, the, the other band members covered, but I don't know if it was the arena that made that sign or if it was actually a hint. Because it's ironic how we, you know, they've had this TikTok account for the whole month. And it's ironic how the last show, we get a little tease about world tour. But if we are, if there are to be more dates, I think it's just kind of like what John said this month was, just to kind of test the waters and see how well they do. It's gonna be international, it, it would, I would imagine. And it won't be until November, December, because Phil's schedule is booked. Through November. I thought his October, November was Skid Row. Yeah. And, you know, the band members have other commitments, too, that aren't out yet. So, you know, I think that they'll test the waters just to kind of get warmed up. But the big thing, the big picture is next year, you know, getting ready for that and stuff. So um, my, my last thing is, too. Other songs I wish that they would have played off of 2020 
was Brothers in Arms, Shine, Love Can, and Unbroken. I would have thought Love Can or Unbroken would have gotten played. Unbroken would have been great for a, an acoustic set. Actually, all those songs, Shine, Love Can, you know, I, I, I thought Love Can would have been a great way to, kind of like I'll Be There For You, finish the show with Love Can. Problem is, though, how many fans actually know Love Can? You know, well, and I thought Unbroken would have been something that would have been more familiar because they promoted it with the movie so much. And even if you didn't have the album, you'd recognize it. Yeah. I hate saying it, though, but I don't think a lot of fans, the gen, I'm saying general fans here, I don't think they would know Unbroken. You know, but that doesn't give it a reason for the band not to play it. Um, either Either way, I think... Uh, Love Can would have been a great way to close the show too but like I said fans know I'll be there for you more than Love Can so you you want to leave the stage with the whole audience tied to that song to sing along and stuff Love Can Love Can I think would be gr- better for a runaway trip you know I, I you know as a as a closer but you know at the end of the day I really 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 did enjoy this tour. I thought it was great. I was glad to see my favorite band again. I was excited to see my friends. I was excited, excited to make new friends like you. Um Yeah, I mean that's the big takeaway too. Is like I did two VIPs and I've never done VIPs before because I've never been able to yeah pay for it. But they were both a little bit different. I met different people. It was so cool to be part of that. But like that day we spent with all you guys I walked away from there thinking, God, it's so nice to have people who are on the same page. And I feel like I've made lifelong friends. And, you know, we walked away from there thinking, God, it feels like I've known you forever. And we only met today, which was really cool. Yeah. You know, and that's that's where I I am now with, you know, with the tour is, you know, yeah, the the, it's so fun to see your favorite band on stage for two, three hours. But. You know, like for Nashville, for example, I was there all weekend. The highlights for me was seeing all my friends and just being able to spend time with you and other people. And just to me, that's what's so great is, is making friends from this band. And I, I tell you, some of these friends I have because of this band, I talk to every day. Yeah. Um, so. Well, and it's an excuse to make a vacation out of it. Like, I haven't been to California since I was 18 years old. So if they play the West Coast, I've got somebody to stay with. And then we'll go see a show and I'll sightsee, you know. So if you look at the big picture. Yeah. And uh, that's why I tell Rachel, my my wife, as I say, you know, I love going to different cities. Because I, I went to cities I've never seen them. I've never seen them in Milwaukee. I've never seen them in Raleigh. I've never seen them in Nashville. So I said, I want to see them in different cities because you also get – a taste, excuse me, um, I, a taste of a different city and stuff and try new things, try new food. You know, like Milwaukee is like the, uh, they're known for their custard and their cheese curds and all that. So I remember when I went to Milwaukee, my friend Pam took me to the best and I, I'm crazy about ice cream. I love ice cream. And my friend Pam took me to the best place uh, that's known for ice cream and it's truly best ice cream I've ever had. So, so that, that's an idea of, you know, why it's so great to go to different cities. Right. But, and doing the t- backstage tour of the Grand Ole Opry, I'm not technically a country music fan, but it was so impressive and I've been wanting to do it for a long time. So it was, you know, exactly. You know, so, but you know, t- to kind of, you know, I want to add one, I want to add one thing too about the tour. Um, I want to add it. The visuals I thought were really cool too. Um, obviously, they used the same stage setup as they used for this house. You know, and, and same thing with band member placement. I did notice that he was actually on in the front now. He wasn't in the back like he was on the last tour. Right. So I thought that was cool. Um, but the as far as the visual effects, I thought were really cool. You know, with the, the lighting. Perfect example is the way that they did Let It Rain. I loved those four giant screens. And it looked like a window pane with rain dripping down. And I thought that was so cool. So the yes. visual effects were pretty cool on this tour. Um, and, you know, the, I don't know what they were, but like, like little, you saw them going up, like, especially for like It's My Life, they came up. It's like a slinky in a way. Yeah. I, I, I sound like a fool here, but um, I thought that was pretty cool too. Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool stage. Anything you want to add about the tour? 
No, I like I said, I was so glad to see three different shows, you know, beginning, middle, end, and got to see different views, you know, sitting higher up and sitting in second row and then sitting in the middle and just, I, I loved it. I can't wait for the next one. I, I, I'm already picking up a shift so I can start saving my money. Yep, exactly. I told, I told my wife we're, we're saving and we're saving up for next year, so... I said, that's why I said, I guess I'll keep putting off painting my house because I got to p- keep paying for Bon Jovi concerts. <laughs> exactly. Because one day we won't have Bon Jovi. I know. I then know. You, then you'll have time to paint. So anyway, Elaine, th- uh, don't hang up. I'll, I'll end the recording here. But I want to thank you again for coming on today. I was trying to think of who I'd want to come on. And I remember just our conversation uh, at the Pancake Pantry and stuff. And I kind of thought. She'd be perfect to do it. So well, thank you. I'm really flattered, Jerry. Good, good, good. So stay on. Thank you again for coming on. Okay. Thank you.